Welcome to Let's Adventure with Honey in Minecraft. Baker Street, give you a hint. Oh yeah, we are doing a Sherlock Holmes adventure today. I'm so excited. Oh, I was searching for the next adventure map to bring to everybody and I saw this one. I just knew it was the one and the more I looked into it, the more excited I got. First of all guys, it's not a very old map. It's only been out about a month. I'm gonna give you a link in the description. Get it yourself. There's going to be a link to the Minecraft forum page that they have, and of course there's a download link there. Lots of details on the creators. This is actually made by Red Mine Wolf and Face Puncher XL. Now, Red Mine Wolf and Face Puncher are Block 34 Studios. That as a team, that's what they are, and this is their adventure map. Not only do they take a painterly pack and adjust it a bit for a um, recreating the uh, Victorian London but they did some very unique things they have actually brought us a fully voiced and cutscened adventure notice there's not a wall of signs for me to read to tell us what the story is and where we need to go next they're actually gonna tell us themselves in a series of cutscenes, which the guys have been awesome and given me permission to go ahead and include within this Let's Play. So I'll be able to bring you everything the way you would see it as you play through the game. So it's a really interesting new technique and I think it's going to be really great. These signs are our magical clues to cue the cutscenes. Let me go ahead and go over the rules real quick and then we will jump right into the cutscenes. Rule number one, don't break or place blocks. That's fairly standard. Uh, you know, you see that a lot. There are exceptions. We can place levers, torches, or gravel that is given to us. So at some point, we're going to know this gravel is okay, but we can't dig it up ourselves. Number two, follow directions, like this one. Open this intro, and we'll be given directions as we go through, I'm sure probably within the videos. Number three, don't skip sides. I wouldn't dream of it. Number four, play on peaceful. No dying. Well, that is an important one to point out because you guys know I'm always on hard mode difficulty, so it's on peaceful now. After all, this is not about fighting monsters and getting to the end of the dungeon. This is about puzzling through as the great Sherlock Holmes. Number five, don't attack iron golems or villagers. No brainer, of course we won't. Number six, no cheating, no fly mods, etc. Not going to affect me. I don't run with mods. Number seven, explore, but don't break anything. Well, I will fully explore this place and no worries. I wouldn't dream of breaking your creation. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into the action. My time working with my friend, Sherlock Holmes. No case has ever showed itself to be as complicated or with more devious plot. The case of the blocky conspiracy, when a priceless diamond block went missing from Bernard Mansion, nearly baffled even the sharp mind of Sherlock Holmes. I remember it like it was just a few days ago. I had gone to Baker Street to visit Holmes when I was caught on the street by a messenger. After a quick conversation, I headed up to Holmes's room and found him lying stretched out in front of the fire, as he was often was, his violin lying nearby. Little did I know that that messenger had started when he stopped me on the street, or that we were entering a case that would nearly cost us the lives of all of London, or perhaps the world. Holmes, wake up! I wasn't sleeping, Watson. Then what were you doing exactly? I was concentrating. I believe... I believe I had just made a monumental scientific discovery. And what would that be? I have discovered a compound that will identify previously undetectable poisons. Splendid! However, for now, we have work to do. And what work are you referring to? We have no open cases. A messenger met me at the door. Let me wager a guess. He was from Bernard Mansion and wanted my aid in finding their rare diamond block, which was just recently found to be missing. Incredible! 
How did you deduce it? Elementary, my dear Watson. You have that slip of paper there, but that is the exact color and observable texture as that made by used by the folks at Banan Mansion. Also, your tone had a note of urgency, so just in the case was important. And finally, the diamond block is one of the most well-guarded treasures at the mansion, meaning it is also the only thing they would need my help in locating because of how difficult it would be to steal. Impressive, as usual, Holmes. Now shall we go? Yes, let us leave. The way to Banan Mansion is simple. All we must do is to turn left out of our humble abode, head down the street, and take a right onto Mayweather Street. Then the mansion is simply in sight from there. Wow! That is fantastic! Okay, so, our good friend Watson was stopped, probably right down there on the street, as he came to tell us about whatever he wanted to tell us, and the messenger stopped him, gave him an important briefing, and an urgent message to rush over to the Bernard Mansion. And we come up here, and of course we find Holmes, who is deep in thought, contemplation, not sleeping, no. Coming up with new compounds to discover unknown poisons. What a great opening to a Sherlock Holmes story. Uh, you gotta love Watson. Little did he know how this case would affect all of London let alone all of the world. Oh, I can't wait. Nice touch. Gotta love the smokestacks. So here we are in our flat as Sherlock Holmes. This is our little kitchenette. Our suites. Our bedroom. Awesome. Now if this holds true to the mythos of ooh, torches. So I can place torches. That means I'm assuming I can take them. A book and wool. I'm not going to really need to kill anything, so let's put that in our pointer. Might be useful. Aha! See? Told ya! Torches. Nice. If this holds true to the uh, storyline of Sherlock Holmes, this is going to be the third floor flat. That's where he stayed. And we'll have... Ah! Nice. Yep, no, no way to go up. And we will have Mrs. Hudson downstairs in the first floor apartment, who of course was harassed at all hours of the day by the comings and goings of Sherlock Holmes and all the other potential lodgers knocking on her door. I'm sure she is just out at the moment <laughs> buying groceries. She did cook for her lodgers. A little bit of a garden here. I'm sure that's an herb garden. Oh, fantastic. And coat closet. Perfect. Okay. Not only did Sherlock Holmes, excuse me, not only did we, <laughs> the Sherlock Holmes of 221B Baker Street, uh, figure out exactly what Watson uh, had in mind and what the, what the message was in, of course, perfect style of Sherlock Holmes, but he even gave us directions. He said down the street and to the right, so I don't think it's going to be this right. That's like an alley. Down the street and make a right on like Mayweather, I think, was the street. I don't really see street signs, but it said make a right and we'll see it. Ah, that's going to be the mansion right there. Oh yeah. Really love the use of textures and different materials. This is great. Oh, can't wait to explore this place. In fact, I wonder if we're going to see Wiggins. <laughs> of course, he was the head of the Baker Street Irregulars. Uh, Holmes and Watson used them for their uh, information network, of course. This is a really well-trimmed lawn beautiful fountains that is cool it's like a it's like a Chinese restaurant or Chinese garden or something gotta check that out meanwhile this has got to be the mansion said you can see it uh, looks like we've got a beautiful uh, sort of a fresco there sort of a, a decorative touch and it says K maybe KO not sure what the significance of that is it's the Bernard Mansion, so I'm not sure. That would be the family name. Uh, open, entering the mansion. All right. You must be the legendary Sherlock Holmes, along with his trusty associate, Dr. Watson. 
pleased to meet you. I understand the matter is urgent. May we speak with the lady of the house? I will get her right away. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, please come in immediately. What is the situation, Miss Bernard? Earlier today, my maid was making her rounds on the third floor and discovered that the diamond block, which usually sits in the library, was missing. She told me and I summoned you immediately. And the police? I notified them and they say that they, they'd send someone over later. But I felt better sending you as well. Your reputation precedes you. Thank you. Now, who was in the house at the time of the crime? My, myself, of course, and the six members of my staff. My butler, maid, personal assistant, gardener, chef, and nanny. You don't think one of them did this, do you? We shall see. I wish to speak with all of them. Well, they'll be somewhere either on the first two floors of the house or on the grounds. I told everyone to stay out of the third floor, since that is the crime scene. An excellent idea. I shall have a look there as well. You are free to move about the house, and thank you both very much. You are very welcome, madam. So, Holmes, what do you wish to find first? What? That made no sense. So, Holmes, what do you wish to do first? Interview the staff members, or check out the crime scene? Let us go to the third floor and examine the crime scene. Then we'll talk to the suspects. I study the house's layout, and we need to go to the second floor, enter one of the wings, and head into the master's be master bedroom. The stair to the library is are there. Okay, so <clears throat> we have been shown in by the butler, and we have greeted the lady of the house. So she gave us a lot of good information. I really love these cutscenes. They're so cute. Wow, beautiful paintings. She gave us a lot of information. First of all, we know that uh, we need to investigate who was here at the time of the crime. And she gave us her six uh, employees who were there. Let's see, we had the butler, the maid, the gardener, the chef, the nanny, and um, that's five. Oh, oh, her personal secretary, her personal secretary. So that's six. So Mrs. Bernard has told us who all was on on duty at the time and of course at Sherlock Holmes we have deduced the layout of the lands and we know where to go which is second floor and then through the master bedroom and to the third floor to the library okay so we are gonna check this wing first very cool oh, nice crescent moon alright we're gonna check this wing first Remember, Watson suggested, or inquired, oh, that's not a master bedroom, if we are going to interview people, but at Sherlock Holmes, we feel it is best, yield bowling alley, to get right to the crime scene, and then we can conduct our interviews. So I will resist the urge to poke into every room. Ah, nursery, gonna skip that. That'll be the nanny. Okay, this looks like a bedroom, maybe? Yes! Okay, this is a master bedroom, for sure. So, oh, here it is. Up the stairs to the third floor library, where we shall investigate the crime scene. Wow. This is really cool. I love that detail. Oh, oh, that must be it. Let's just look at this real quick. Very nice, the hanging, hanging lamps. Lots and lots of books and twists and turns. So let's see. Open crime scene. We will do that forthwith. All right. Here's the third floor library. This house is really exquisite. Indeed, but we are not here to look at the Victorian architecture. Quite right, old boy. Here's the stand the block should be setting on. Part of the glass case has been broken. By the mark on the glass, I believe the glass was broken by a heavy door object, presumably with a long handle. Any guess as to what it was? It could be a broom, a spade, even a frying pan. No way to tell for sure. Anything else? The person we're looking for is not between 5 feet 8 inches and 6 feet tall. That's an odd deduction. And 
won't really help us catch the culprit. But it will help us eliminate the suspects, because our suspect is not in between those two heights. They were wearing stilts that made them taller than they actually are, or were crouching to make themselves shorter. Ingenious. But why? To throw us off the scent, the strike on the glass is at an unnatural angle, suggesting the person was wavering when they swung the blunt object. So we are looking for someone either taller than six feet or shorter than five feet eight inches. Yes, exactly. Nothing else? Not at this time. Let us go and interview the suspects and try to send them, shed some light on this conundrum. Wow! Okay. So, we have come up with an interesting deduction. We have determined that the perpetrator has to be shorter than five foot eight and taller than six foot because they either squatted or they were on stilts. So that's an interesting <laughs> conclusion. Also, they broke in with a dull, blunt object, which could have really been common everyday stuff from anyone. So right now, our next mission as Sherlock Holmes is to investigate the house and go about interviewing everybody. 